morning, everyone. Happy Wednesday to you. Welcome to our morning devotion and prayer time. I pray and trust that uh, these morning few minutes together are continuing to be beneficial to you as we spend time in God's word and start the day in prayer. Um, and I would trust that you continue to spread the word that we are doing this so that more people can um, take part and also uh, benefit from the word and from prayer. We're continuing in John 18 today. Um, we're going to pick up in verse 22 and just to, to give you, remind you of a little context, Jesus has been arrested um, and he has been questioned. And yesterday, the last thing we saw him uh, the last thing we saw in this encounter is um, Jesus replying to the high priest about the fact that they know who he is. He's been in the temple teaching regularly. Um, they act as if they do not know him or, or what he has been teaching. So in verse 22, we see this. Then one of the temple guards standing nearby slapped Jesus across the face. Is that the way to answer the high priest? He demanded. Jesus replied, if I said anything wrong, you must prove it. But if I'm speaking truth, why are you beating me? Then Annas bound Jesus and sent him to Caiaphas, the high priest. Meanwhile, as Simon Peter was standing by the fire warming himself, they asked him again. You're not one of his disciples, are you? He denied it, saying, no, I am not. But one of the household slaves of the high priest a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off asked, didn't I see you out there in the olive grove with Jesus? Again, Peter denied it. And immediately the rooster crowed. So we're going to stop there because there's several things to point out. And then tomorrow, um, this is a good start, stopping point because tomorrow we see Jesus before Pilate. But in this uh, continuing encounter here, Jesus replies to their uh, questions and the reward for replying and answer their question is that he gets slapped. So this is the beginning of the brutal and cruel treatment that Jesus will receive at the hands of both the Jewish religious leaders and the Roman um, guards that that um, have taken him captive. Um, so they send him to Caiaphas after this, who is the high priest. Now, let me just point out the irony here. Um, Jesus is slapped because of how he spoke um, to one of the high priests. <laughs> That's really interesting because Jesus is the high priest. There's a lot of, a lot of irony going on here. Um, so they send him on to Caiaphas. And then we see this famous um, setting where Peter continues his denial of Jesus. Um, just to remind us, Jesus has um, predicted that this would take place. He he didn't mince any words when he told Peter um, when he was about to wash his feet and Peter didn't want it to take place. Um, Peter said that he would go to the, to the death with Jesus and Jesus said, um, Peter, here's what's going to happen. Before the rooster crows tomorrow morning, you will deny knowing me three times. And so this is exactly what takes place. And we see the narrative there. What I wanna focus on is something we've talked about in the other gospels, because you have in this um, setting, you have Jesus beginning the brutal beating that he would endure. But again, I contend that nothing that he endures physically is like what he endures spiritually, emotionally, and psychological by being denied and betrayed 
by those that he actually loved so much. At this very moment, my contention is that the pain that Jesus experienced because of Peter's denial was greater than the pain he was beginning to experience physically. That's how much Jesus loves us. He's willing to endure physical pain over emotional and psychological pain. I think we all know that feeling. We all know what it means to be betrayed by a friend, by someone we thought was close to us. But let us not forget Jesus' response to Peter. He looked at him with eyes of compassion. And just a few days later, he would restore Peter. He would forgive Peter. And Peter would become the spark that ignited the church. Jesus lit a flame in, in Peter, and he took it and ran with it. May we do the same. May we take the spark that Jesus has placed in each one of us and run with it and do what God has called us to do. Let's pray together. Father, thank you in the name of Jesus for another day of life, and thank you for the opportunity this morning to um, read your word and to call on your name. We do that right now. We pray that you will help us all to fulfill the calling you've placed on our lives today. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I trust that you'll have a wonderful Wednesday. I do want to remind you, those that are part of the West Shore family, um, we will be meeting tonight at 630 for a uh, time of prayer. If you are available and able, I would in, uh, like to ask you to join us. Um, we're going to be praying specifically for our church and the ministry of our church as we uh, move out of the COVID-19 and the, the pandemic realm and and strive to increase the ministry that God has given us. So join us tonight at 630 um, if you're able. Till tomorrow, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you. May he be gracious to you and may he give you peace. And may you fall just a little bit deeper in love with Jesus today. Take care. God bless you.